Today I've come to Scotland's central belt to visit Grangemouth, home to one of Europe's biggest ports and petrochemical sites. But buried deep in the heart of this industrial estate, not far from the oil refinery, is a green oasis teeming with wildlife. Welcome to the magnificent Jupiter Urban Wildlife Centre. Incredibly, just 14 years ago, this was a railway siding for a chemical works with no vegetation at all. But the Scottish Wildlife Trust, ICI and the local community transformed four acres of this barren landscape into what has now become Scotland's largest organic wildlife garden, containing 350 species of wildflower and a multitude of birds and insects. Keith Brown ran the site for five years and now manages the volunteers who look after it. So this is a real resource for the local community. Without the community coming in and volunteering with us, helping us create the place, it would slowly degrade over time. And they do the management of the site. So it's everything from cutting the grass to planting meadows, where the school children come in and they learn about the wildlife around them and get in contact with everyday objects that they don't usually see, such as mini beasts and great ladybirds. <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> yeah, they do. Which one I see? The British Trust for Conservation Volunteers manage the ground and people come from all over Scotland to muck in. Today the team are going to tackle a watery habitat that really needs our help. So it's time to put on our waders and get stuck in. Why are we doing this? Well, it's a horrible task, but it has to get done. About every seven years, you have to get into these ponds and clear them out of the vegetation. And why is that? Well, the main reason is, is ponds don't want to be ponds. Slowly the vegetation will encroach, closing up the open water, until eventually, over many, many years, it will turn into a woodland. Over 80% of our ponds have disappeared from our countryside, mainly through lack of management and ag changes in agricultural practices. So being out with our volunteers, we're actually saving a very precious part of Britain's wildlife. Heath, it's not very glamorous. <laughs> very glamorous job. Imagine all the dragonflies you're benefiting. But it's not just dragonflies that live here, as the local school found out on their pond dipping trip. Ponds are quite amazing places, they're teeming with life. As soon as you put a pond net into the pond, start sweeping it around, you start finding a myriad of beasts that are living within the ponds. I had no idea how much wildlife there was in this pond. It's really nice to come here, there's not enough screen space for Alice, so I think we should come here more often. This is different from like where it's near where we live because this is nice and near where I live and it's like not that nice. That's where like loads of pollution is and it's not a very good environment. One of the things that makes Jupiter stand out is that most of its plants are generated on site. Now I'm picking these berries to get at the seeds which are then propagated in the nursery and planted in the gardens. The whole place is self-sustaining. The nursery is run by Nancy McIntyre from the Scottish Wildlife Trust and her volunteers. It started out as a single polytunnel, but over the years it's expanded and now contains over 200 plant species and has won six horticultural awards. Native plant seed is sourced from all over Scotland and then either used on site or sold to the general public or local businesses for habitat restoration work. So the Jupiter Centre not only generates income, but promotes biodiversity at the same time. 
So, thanks to the work of Nancy, Heath and the volunteers, this little patch of paradise will continue to provide a home for the many birds and insects that otherwise would have nowhere to live in Grangemouth. <laughs>